the Mellon security approach. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Rita Trinkler. I'm the chairman and co-founder, together with Mona Elisa of Mellonport. And we are doing technology-regulated investment funds, um, completely with ERC-20 tokens, and obviously security is paramount for us. So I'd like to s talk a bit about the Mellon approach to security. And I hope you're all going to see that we try to have a really holistic approach to security. So um, holistic means, or like to give, to give a short overview, um, I'm going to talk uh, shortly about uh, what is Mellon, what, what are our values, um, then a bit uh, theoretical part of it, like how we designed the protocol. After that, we go into code, so um, how we develop our code, like from smart contracts to front end, um, how we approach the auditing process, and how we go in even beyond technology and try to shape regulation. So, Mellonport. We're doing technology-regulated investment funds. So, this concept of technology regulation is really this concept of contracts enforced by technology. So, if you're doing a smart contracts, then you don't necessarily need to, need to have a lawyer or an auditor or an enforcer. Um, the technology is actually sufficient. The technology enforces itself. So we're using this concept of technology regulate, uh, regulation and build investment funds on top of it. So investment funds is really just a set of assets, uh, usually from a set of people, the investors, given to a manager and are held in, in one place, the custodian. The manager then can take those assets and trade them against other assets, uh, preferably in a way that is beneficial to the investors. So what are our values? How do we want to design this? Uh, we want to design it in a way that is reliable. Uh, re reliable really means um, that it can't be undone. So, <laughs> so since we're doing an alternative way of asset management, I think it's important to build it in a way where it can't be undone. So it's arguably what made Bitcoin to what it is today, the fact that it couldn't be undone. Uh, the second aspect of reliability is that it's secure. So obviously, if it isn't secure, then it's not very useful. So that's, I think that's why we're all here today as well. So uh, the second value is it should be permissionless. So permissionless really means that it's not for us to decide who can and cannot use Melon. The same way it wasn't up for Tim Berners-Lee to decide who can use and cannot use the internet. And the third one is it should be ownerless. So ownerless just means you know, not controlled by a central party. Uh, Mellon should be a common good, the same way the internet is a common good. So Mellon. Um, this is a, a short overview of, of the design of the protocol. Um, in the middle, you see a Mellon fund. A Mellon fund, or like the core aspect of it, is really just a set of smart contracts. Um, this set of smart contracts acts as the fund custodian. So as I'm sure you all know, smart contracts don't have private keys, so they can't spend assets themselves. They need to have custom code on how to spend those assets again. It's really a core aspect of our uh, security approach. The second thing those smart contracts um, uh, act uh, for is, or they, they are supposed to be, or they are uh, the fund accountant, meaning um, they calculate the performance of the manager, they calculate the share price, they calculate the management fees, the performance fees, like the incentive layer for the manager. And to do so, they need to have data. So they need to have data of uh, the prices of the assets. And that's where the data feed module comes in. So the data feed module is essentially just uh, another set of smart contracts which deliver data to the blockchain. So um, we were very lucky with um, having Oracle ICE, together with CryptoCompare uh, building an, uh, a data feed module for us that uses native proofs to validate data, which means that 
data from its source to the blockchain um, is almost impossible to manipulate. Um, another great data feed module um, just recently announced is the one from Thomson Reuters. So you can have, <laughs> you can have your, your Mellon Fund now evaluated against data delivered from Thomson Reuters. <laughs> um, great. Um, so we have fund custodian, we have fund accountant. If, if you look at what fund administration does, then we see fund administration does uh, fund custodian, uh, fund accountant, um, KYC AML, and risk management. So we just seen that we can solve two of them, fund custodian and fund accountant, with smart contracts. So how do we tackle uh, KYC AML and risk management? So that's where the participation module comes in and the risk management module. So for those that don't know, like um, fund administration, they handle a trillion uh, dollar, the trillion dollar industry. So, okay, so participation. Um, so the way participation works is really, if someone wants to invest in a Mellon fund, on smart contract level, it's like a phone call to another set of smart contracts with a, with a, s a set of parameters, and essentially asks the participation module, uh, is this person allowed to invest or not? So for example, um, we're, we're working with the government of Tzu that um, essentially then, um, you know, they work with u to have like, uh, to register citizens. So, um, so this participation module will be then like um, calls on smart contract level to the government of Tzu and ask, is this person registered with us? If yes, this person is, is allowed to invest. If no, then not. So, but this really extends to just government of two, like it's, it's essentially every jurisdiction or every uh, uh, certain need can be implemented in such a module. And the fourth aspect of fund administration is risk management. So risk management is similar. So if the manager wants to make a trade, it's like calling the risk management module before the trade happens. Um, is this trade allowed, yes or no? Um, so for example, well one, one example for risk management is uh, only trades are allowed that are um, above the current market price. So that um, trading that is not beneficial for investor becomes really hard. And it really leads to a system where the manager and the investor, they don't actually have to know each other. The same way if you make a Bitcoin transaction, you don't actually need to know who's behind the public key. It's sufficient to just trust in the technology. So that's technology regulated funds. Okay, so what, what happens if, if this set of smart contracts now needs to be upgraded? Um, so essentially we have this concept of version, which is like protocol version, similar to Ethereum. Um, all, all of the, the Mellon funds are, uh, are identical. Uh, in each version, and if, if a version now needs to be upgraded, then it's essentially just a governance layer that um, will be most likely just a set of people that are kind of voted in by the, the token holders, so it's a small set of people, um, thus they can act efficiently and fast if needed, yet they're still uh, legitimized by, by all of the token holders. So yeah, those set of people then can add or remove versions effectively upgrading. Great, so now uh, a bit um, about how we actually code these things. Um, so we, we currently use DAP. So for those that know, don't know, DAP su uh, Suite is really a great tool. Um, it, it's, it's really nice for solidity unit, uh, unit tests and they have like a, a Haskell implementation of the EVM. So it, it allows uh, developers to really dig deep in, into the lowest level of the EVM to see where, where the bug is, for example. Um, a second great tool that we use is Oyente. So we're, we're currently funding the development of Oyente. Um, it's essentially a, a smart contract uh, analyzing tool. It allows to test your contracts against certain properties. So for example, uh, uh, re-entrancy 
can be checked automatically with this tool. Um, another really, really great tool is you can build in custom assertions. So for example, you know, assert that the accounting checks out after each function call, and then you can uh, apply Oyente and try to violate that assertion. So if that uh, violation isn't, uh, if that assertion isn't violated, that's a good sign that it's actually not possible to ever violate that assertion. Uh, and we integrated that now with Travis CI, so every time we, we make a commit, uh, Oyente gets run. Uh, then we use Chessman tests. Uh, Chessman tests is really um, useful for us for this holistic approach. So we, we um, with Chessman, we can uh, build like expectation sets and then share them across GitHub repositories. So for example, we have the same expectation sets on smart contract level as we have in Melon.js, our JavaScript library. Uh, and, and we also just recently switched to Parity.js, so we have the Parity dev chain instead of test RPC. So how do we approach front end? So <coughs> um, just maybe a short explanation. Like if you build smart contracts, and if like 99% of your users end up using a front end to the, those contracts, then arguably the front end is similar as important as, or the security of the front end is similar to a, as important as the smart contracts itself. Um, so that's why we use IPFS. IPFS is really great for security. Um, because it has this content addressed nature. So um, content addressed really means that the content that you uh, view on, on IPFS is addressed by its hash. So you can verify in our GitHub that in our you know, build folder that the hash that we uh, create is actually the hash that you access on IPFS. So there's no way um, to build in any malicious code, you know, code that for example, um, tracks you or you know tries to steal your private keys or yeah collect some data so it's really transparent and it's really um, reliable as well because it, you know it's hosted on essentially a BitTorrent swarm so um, yeah makes it really reliable uh, obviously permissionless and nonetheless as well um, then we have Melon Mail. So Melon Mail is, is, is essentially a, a messaging service that is as, as secure as your crypto. By the way, um, if you want to see the front end, it's melon.fun. If you want to see the, the mail service, it's melon.email. Um, it, it uses your private key to encrypt your communication and then stores it on IPFS. So the reason why this is important, so imagine you work for Jamie Diamond and you know, he threatens you to fire you if you ever uh, trade with crypto. Um, but with Melon Mail, you still can use, you still can have a Melon phone, and you know, having, having essentially just your uh, public key exposed, your investors can still communicate with you, and you never share anything more than your public key. Um, so how we approach audits and bug bounties? So um, we start with audits from uh, well-known and well-respected individuals and companies, and then open it up to a general bug bounty so that everyone can participate. Um, and eventually we deploy a live Melon fund that is funded, and whoever, get, whoever can hack it can have the, the amount that it was funded with. Um, by the way, uh, we always incentivize people. So if you found a vulnerability in our codes, no matter if the bug bounty started already, uh, you will get incentivized for it. Um, so, <laughs> so as, as, uh, as technologists, we love what we do, and technology is really important for us. But I think uh, a holistic approach to security uh, goes beyond just technology. Um, so that's why we uh, created MAMA, it's the Multi-Chain Asset Managers Association, which is essentially a trade body uh, that tries to get uh, innovative companies uh, together at a, t a table and allows them to give a voice so that the conversation isn't just dominated by the big banks or the, the traditional asset managers, but that <coughs> innovative people and companies actually can organize and have their voice as well um, in order to shape uh, legislation and regulation. Great. So 
Uh, lastly, uh, check out melon.fund. It's, it's also completely in IPFS, has a beautiful interface to it. Check out melon.email. Uh, go to oriente.melon.fund. Um, check out github.com slash melon project. Uh, we love pull requests, we love issues. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter at Melonport and join Mama if you're here representing an institution. Um, and maybe just lastly, um, the reason why it's good to go to Melon.fund and, and start practicing it a bit is that we just recently announced that uh, we're going to issue 500,000 Melon. I think it's worth like 30, 35 million right now. Um, just in the context of fund management competitions. So if so you can participate those, and if you're good at it, you get a lot of melons. If you're not that good, you'll get still a little, but <laughs> not that much. Um, so that's, that's essentially how we're gonna issue those, uh, those remaining melons. Uh, yeah, and by the way, also on, on GitHub, like we have, if, if you're an algo trader as developers, uh, we already have like an open source trading bot that you can use and modify and you know, why trade manually if you can build a trading bot? <laughs> Great, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. Do you want to take one or two questions? We have a couple of minutes, yeah. We have time, time for one or two questions. Any, any questions? Do you have a question? Hello, first of all, congratulations. About MAMA, you're just working on Switzerland legislation or working with other countries like US or Singapore? Um, so, so we would like to make this available for, for everyone, but obviously uh, our time is very limited and we can't, like, we, we can't make this compliant to every single jurisdiction. Um, so we, we kind of started with government of two just to have like, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess a, signal effect, a signaling effect that this is actually possible that the governance and uh, government, governments and jurisdictions actually want this, um, and yeah. But actually, uh, like with the participation module, er anyone can build those, and we intend to incentivize. Like the people that build uh, good participation modules and good risk management modules will get in incentivized for it. Yeah, I, I was so concentrated on my own question that probably this was a similar question, but um, the requirements to KYC Whose requirement is it? Is it the fund manager who is only allowed to serve uh, KYC customers? Or is it you as a software developer? Uh, no, it's, it's the investors essentially. Like it's, it's the requirements that are, um, like what is required for an investor to invest. Okay, so if you want to attract regular investors, they need to prove to their, I mean the people who watch over them, that um, they, mm, they let the money manage by uh, identifying managers? Is that a requirement? Um, so it, so it's because I thought the KYC requirement yeah. was for the investors, so the investors need to be KYC. Yeah, that's and true. it's not their requirement, so it's not their need that there is KYC in. Because, I mean, I can be an investor. <laughs> I mean, there, there are an, uh, investors who want to remain anonymous, right? Right, but um, the, you know, the in, in, the, in a similar way that there might, that there are probably a lot of managers that don't want to have anonymous investors. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, hi, Reto. Hi. Um, uh, the initial roadmap was uh, the product to be delivered in two years, but um, it was uh, early one year. Why was that? Um, yeah, so we're, we're well ahead of uh, schedule, so we're, we're aiming to have this live with a basic form of governance uh, next February 2018, so that's one year ahead. Yeah, but what happened that you could make it so fast uh, as you, <laughs> faster than you planned? <laughs> so, um, we really, like, like I think in, in all our communications, we're really not hyping, and like, it, it's just in the same concept, like we didn't, we didn't want to hype and say, okay, we have this in two weeks, um, but we, want to be, we wanted to be very conservative. If we are faster, then it's great for everyone. Um, if we are a bit slower, um, then we still have some cushions, you know. Thanks. Okay, one last question. Uh, hi, I'm wondering how, uh, how 
mature is the integration with the exchanges so far, and uh, what's your roadmap on uh, on integrating with them? Yeah, that's a great question. So for now, we are, we are using um, the exchange of Wasi Stacks, which is like a fully decentralized exchange. Um, but we're working hard on integrating other exchanges as well. Um, but also this, like it's all it's all a matter of time resources, and we want to have like a working product as or a, a live working product as soon as possible, and from then on. Um, continue like integrating other exchanges. 